This program is brought to you by Emory University. I think one of the things that really differentiates this project from most is it's an explorer. It's an exploration tool. What's so exciting about this project is it's redefining how we're approaching urban history. What I wanted to show you was a project that we've been working on for the past couple of years, taking uh, historic atlases and historic city directories and turning them into spatial history tools. We looked at the Atlanta Atlas in 1928, uh, and we wanted to take from it, extract the features from it, create this historical geodatabase of Atlanta as it existed circa 1930. This particular atlas came in two different scales, one to 1,000 feet and one to 200 feet. If we zoom in on the atlas pages themselves, we see there's a lot of detail on them. There's a lot of railroads, sidewalks are shown, fire hydrants, buildings. So in building a historic geodatabase, we had to consult the atlas pages itself. We had to consult the legend to get some ideas of how we might structure our data. And our next tool was uh, geocoder. And the geocoder was taken from city directories that we built a database from and then attached to those points of interest that we had digitized. There were some interesting things that we found in the city directory. For example, race is identified in the Atlanta Atlas of 1930. Some people are designated by a small c, which would stand for colored in this particular directory. We brought in the data from another project, the Hanley Bell Death Records. We ran them through the geocoder and then we could plot them in the GIS system. We began setting out to extract data from the map pages themselves, the geometry. We captured building footprints, we captured transportation lines like the electric streetcar, the railroads, the hydrology network, administrative boundaries. But one of the biggest challenges was extracting over 80,000 points of interest. It gave students that came to our center an opportunity to work with GIS. So on the left, you see a house numbering map of Atlanta that's around the same time period. And then you see the points of interest that were divided up for the students to be able to do address matching to the points. Once we engaged in this project, we realized how quickly it became collaborative. We turned to partners like Georgia State University to get other map content. They had great collections of some of the buildings that could inform our 3D models. We realized that we could take the two-dimensional polygons that we had for the buildings and extrapolate them into 3D buildings. We recently have been working with the Emory University in the Art History Department, working on taking the maps of Giovanni Battista Falda and converting them into a walkable virtual environment. While we've been working on this project, we were also contacted by the Emory Center for Digital Scholarship and similarly converting what they have as a series of bountiful data and converting it into something that we can walk around as well. Our strength is in visualizing things three-dimensionally, so taking that two-dimensional data and turning it into something that's kind of a user experience, something that's you know uh, immersive and uh, has some feeling and some textures and, and really makes it come alive. So each one of these building blocks is actually created from the database that Michael Page and his group had developed over time. So whatever that database has set into it can be pulled up simply by kind of exploring building by building to find out more information about each of those buildings. And Atlanta's particularly interesting because of how it's changed so dramatically from 1930 to today. Mm -hmm. And that ability just to be able to tilt the camera angle to be able to see the skyline of 1930. And then lastly, the immersed experience, if you click on a link, you find a building you want to go to or an area on the map that you want to go to, it brings you down to ground level. What we've done is create the area around what we call the Flatiron Building in Atlanta. It allows you to walk around and see kind of what the streets were like, what the spaces were like, what the building faces were like. For instance, this building was one that was actually burned down. So the ability to now walk down the street and see some things that don't exist is kind of fascinating for a lot of people. One of the exciting aspects of this particular project is the ability for it to be brought into the classroom as a teaching tool. The fact that 
students can go in and they don't have to have specific expertise about how to operate a geographic information system or take a class for a year, that they can jump in, move around, touch things, ask questions, turn thematic layers on and off. That's a new approach to digital scholarship. So photographs were an obvious choice, but we also realized that we could attach scholarship, other types of databases. So one of the new features that we've started to add in is uh, a part of the data that's uh, living, it's organic. Uh, we've set up individual wiki pages for each of the buildings so that if somebody has ancestral information about a particular house, that stuff can be added into that wiki page. Uh, it's a living thing, it's no longer it's just a static period of time, but something more than that. We wanted it to serve as a model to other institutions that might be interested in, in documenting or remapping their city. We've only captured at the immersive level one small corner of Atlanta. It would really be, be exciting to grow this. And Peachtree is such an important thoroughfare for Atlanta this time of year. Just to be able to take a stroll down Peachtree, you know, from Midtown to Downtown to the Five Points area would be quite interesting. One of the ideas that we've tossed around was, well, if we could do this for 1930, we're not so dependent on 1930 anymore. It would be really easy to build this backwards or go forward you know, uh, if we wanted to do 1940 or 1920, at least we have a baseline right. to start from. I think early on we talked about that very idea and how it would be awesome to be able to have a slider bar on the bottom so that you could actually go through this kind of visual exercise but then slide it forward or backward in time and see how the city has changed. Uh, really looking at how things grew and fell apart and uh, how the city evolved. So what we're trying to do with the Atlanta Explorer Project, we're trying to build a set of tools and resources for scholars or maybe GIS professionals that want to be able to really in-depth explore the databases and the map features and do some spatial modeling of Atlanta at this time period. But we also want to engage the public so that we can both gather information but also share with them this uh, content that has been locked away previously in, in libraries. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.